I'm Valerie, and today I'm in Germany, England, the Netherlands, Japan. Or am I? Recently, the Tim Traveler issued the International Staycation Challenge to find somewhere near you that looks like it isn't. As both a cosplayer and an indie film person, I'm constantly on the lookout for good locations. So I feel like I had a little bit of a head start on this and spent a recent free morning visiting a small sampling of the nearest ones. Our first stop is Pratt's Castle, right on the Fox River in my hometown of Elgin, Illinois. It was built in 1937 by Harold S. Pratt as a private museum for his collection of medieval artifacts. Pratt is said to have based the design on a castle he saw along the Rhine River while serving in World War I. If you know anything about the Rhine, you know this doesn't exactly narrow it down. If I had to bet, based on a Google image search, I'd guess Rheinstein Castle, which is the closest match for the round keep and the style of crenellations and windows. Pratt's castle is right next to the Fox River Trail, and I've passed it many times on bike rides. My plan for this video was to shoot a quick bit of video from the trail, but as luck would have it, I happened to arrive at the same time as the owner, Paul Summer, who bought the property at auction in 1998. Mr. Summer very kindly invited me inside the bailey on the first floor of the 50-foot tall keep, so please enjoy this unexpected footage. Unfortunately, in recent years, there have been issues with damage to the landscaping as well as vandalism to the castle itself. If you visit, please remember this gem is private property and stay on the public trail to take your photos. A couple miles downstream is downtown Elgin, specifically the corner of Villa Court and DuPage Street, where arguably the Tudorist of several Tudor-style buildings in the area caught my eye when I first moved here. There was a bit of a vogue for this style in the 1920s. This example was built in 1928 and has served at various times as apartments, offices, and the Elks Lodge. It's currently for sale if you're interested and can cough up just under a million dollars. Heading south to Batavia, we come to Fabian Forest Preserve, once George and Nell Fabian's grand estate named Riverbank. On the east side stands a windmill straight out of Don Quixote's nightmares. The 68-foot, five-story structure was originally built by Louis Blockhaus, a German craftsman between 1850 and 1860. The windmill originally stood on a site in what is now Lombard, Illinois. In 1914, it was purchased by George Fabian for about $8,000 and moved to Riverbank. After the property became part of the Forest Preserve District, they contracted Dutch expert Lucas Verbe to restore the windmill, and it opened to the public in 2005. I've been meaning for years to get down there on a day the tours are open, but have never quite managed it. The final leg of our journey is on foot, across the river to the western side of the park. This is where you find the Fabian's home, now a museum, and several distinct garden and park areas, including a Japanese tea garden designed in 1910 by Taro Otsuka. The garden recently reopened after the pandemic, and visitors can enter on Wednesdays and Sundays between 1 and 4 p.m. Unfortunately, the day I had available to film was a Friday, but there's plenty of beauty to observe from outside the fence. The Fabian's former boathouse, with its Japanese-style roof, has been moved up the bank near the garden for visitors to enjoy. The forest preserve system is one of my favorite things about living in Illinois, and this particular area is a lovely one to explore on both sides of the river. Although it's also on the Fox River Trail, it's a little far for my casual cycling stamina so I usually drive down to enjoy walking around the grounds. Two honorable mentions along the same route that I wasn't able to visit. Dunham Castle, modeled on a French chateau and built in 1883 by Mark Dunham. Since it's another private property and there's no shoulder to speak of along either of the roads that border it, there wasn't anywhere for me to park and get any video. And the Viking ship built for the 1893 World's Fair is now housed in a museum at Good Templar Park in Geneva, but it's only open once a month, and July's day is three days after the challenge deadline. It's easy to get jaded about the places in history close to home, but the truth is there are interesting corners to find everywhere. I hope you discover one near you soon. And until next time, bye-bye.
and then we are very much in America waiting for a freight train.